Hey there, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to talk about debugging and error handling. I will show you the most effective ways to debug the request method and also how to handle bad responses that throw errors when a request call is not responding properly. When I say that is not responding properly, in this example, I mean that it can return an error code status which will automatically trigger to throw an error in Node.js. First off, let me directly show you what I mean by that. So, as you can see, here we have a simple request to this URL. Firstly, I want to show you what this is exactly. I will drag out this window, and as you can see, this is just a simple website that helps you with testing, and it returns different uh, responses depending on what endpoint you hit. So, in our case, I'm going to hit the status codes endpoint, because I want to return different statuses so that I can show you what I mean with the uh, error handling. And in this example, I'm going to hit the status codes with get. And as you can see, we can hit 100, 200, 300. These are just simple examples, but you get the point. I will drag this out and let's see how we can do this. I'm going to write right here status slash 200 because I want to first return the 200 code and the 200 code means success. So basically this is just like a normal request. Okay, I'm going to also rename this to status, hit save and then I'm going to start to run it. Okay, it stopped in the debugger. Let's see what value I have and I'm going to write here status. As you can see, we don't see anything because we are returning just a status code and not actually any content. So right here, this is the first thing that I want to show you. Right now, if we open this URL, let me go right here again. If we open this, like you see, nothing happens. And that's because it returns a status, nothing in the body. But what if you actually want to check what status code you get after the request is done? Then here's what you want to do. Let me copy this line and then open up right here the options so that we can specify more advanced options right here. So firstly, I'm going to paste in the URL again and then I'm going to specify resolve with full response. True. Okay. And right now I'm going to stop it, stop the debugger and then save it and run again. Let's see what we have now. Okay, it stopped right here and then I will write status, hit enter, and then now we have something different. And now let's see what details we have. Keep in mind that not all of them are relevant and not all of them might help you. Right here you can see the connection, also right here you can see the headers from the request response that are returned to you. So you can see the date, the content type, the server depending on what you're hitting. And let's close this up and let's look for the status code. And as you can see, here it is. Status code 200 with the status message OK. This means it's working properly, there's nothing to worry about. But of course, some websites might throw out errors even if the status code is 200. So it, this really depends on the website that you're scraping. Now let's stop the actual uh, debugger process and let's try right here with 300. 300 is usually a redirect, so this should throw out an error. Let's see what happens actually. Let's start to run it. And as you can see, it throws out an error. And even though the response 300 is basically a redirect response, request promise will handle it as an actual error. So you need to handle it properly. In this case, what you can do, because we are using await, we can easily use try and catch. So let's do that right here. Try and then right here, catch. And you're going to catch the actual response. And let's hit the debugger when this happens so that we can investigate what response we get. Okay, let's start to hit it again. And it stops right here, as you can see, and let's check the response. We have a status code error, the error is nothing, message 300, name status code error, 
and then right here you can see the options that you've sent to the actual URL and then the response, what you get. If you go right here, we have the body empty and then also we have right here the status code. Okay, so here's what you want to know. Every response code that returns 300 or above will throw out an error. This doesn't mean the actual response is failed or for example, let's say you have a login form and you're going to send the username, the password and when you're sending the actual request, the server returns the status code 300 but the actual username and password is correct. Then this code will throw out an error but the actual login on the website is good. So in that case, if you have a login form that returns a 300 error, you must handle it properly, even though it will throw out an error. Good, now let's test it out with the 400 status code. Let's see what happens then. Let me run again the code. It stops again in the debugger and I'm going to write here again response. We are going to check it and again, you see the message, you see the name, you see the options that you've sent and also the response. The response is the most effective way of checking what you get if the actual options that you've sent are okay. And as you can see, you have everything that you want to check right here. If the actual request is good, if it's not good and you see headers, the connection, everything that you want to check. Okay, let me show you what you can actually do. Let's take the example that I've told you. You have a username, a password and a login system and the status code will return 300. But that actual 300 is not an error and you don't want to stop the scraper. What do you do? So right here in the catch, you want to check for this response status code. And you can do it just like this. If response.status code is 300, then console.log everything is okay. Else, if the status code is above 300, then let's throw out an error. Console.log something happened and then I'm going to concatenate the actual response and then after that I'm going to exit the process. Just like this. Alright, this is just a simple example, of course you can handle it however you want. This is a very basic example, but I hope you get the point. So I'm going to remove this debugger right here and also this one right here and I'm going to save it and let's hit it, let's see what happens. So as you can see we expect 300, we get 300 and then we console log everything is okay. If we get 350, let's see what we have. Something happened and then status code error 350. This means it works, the actual catcher works properly and we don't have any actual error that is not handled. Okay, now before closing out this video, I want to show you something extra that might help you sometimes, but I personally don't use it that much. I basically rely on setting debuggers and actually checking what answers I get and what the variables are in different states. But this might help you. So let's see what we can do. Right here, after we initialize the request promise library, we can do something like this. Request dot debug equals one. And now I'm going to save it and let's see what happens. I'm going to hit run again. And then again, the same answer right here, something happened, stop to code error 350, that's okay. But if you look above, then it will automatically output to the console more information. This is what you've sent, the options that you're sending uh, with resolve with full response to true. And then it says that the request is sending the actual request. And right here you can see the headers that you get it's reading the response body and it's finishing up the function and you see here the actual response. These logs might help you depending on what you're trying to do. So keep in mind this because it can help sometime. So with this being said, I'm going to close out this video right here. 
Thank you for watching. Let's take a short break and I'll see you in the next video.